please welcome the president of Bristol Community College, Dr. Jack Sprague. success that he's had uh, because he engineered it. He gives a lot of credit to other people and there are other people that require credit, but he is the main driving force and thank you, Joe. Very, very appreciative of that. Well, this is a great program for us. Uh, uh, I must tell you, we I think it's the first time that we put the, uh, the two agencies together, the cooperative education and the civic engagement. Uh, and partly it's because we're cheap, we don't have enough money to run two separate lunch lunches anymore, but I'm going to talk to the Lieutenant Governor about that. <laughs> but it's a great event, it's, it's wonderful to see the, uh, the uh, cafeteria filled like this with uh, all people that support the community, uh, and from the community, and uh, support the community college, we're very grateful to you. Uh, I always say the community is our middle name, and this is a good example of it. We provide our resources available, including this beautiful view. I love this view for everyone. Uh, but uh, we provide our resources to the community, and in turn, the community provides it, uh, its resources uh, for our students and for the educational process. And we're very, very uh, grateful for that. Uh, we all benefit. Our student success is our biggest, uh, uh, most important product here at uh, BCC. And I always say our, their success, student success, means our success. And not just the Bristol Community College success, but success in the community as well. If you know the two things that we're always talking about in this region, levels of educational attainment, levels of literacy, you know we have a lot of work to do and the community is behind us as we, uh, as we take on those formidable challenges. Um, I wanted to um, just quickly uh, talk about uh, our two activities. The, uh, uh, service learning, as I used to call it. Uh, I never talk about service learning when I'm talking about the hyphen that goes in the middle of service and learning because the hyphen connects uh, the learning with the service and uh, very important. I uh, have been involved with service learning in various states and various locations for a long, long time. And uh, uh, I'm wholly committed to it. Uh, I think that uh, for our students and the education we provide, I'm always talking to new students in orientation about the holistic education that we provide. It's not just the wonderful learning that goes on with our outstanding faculty inside the classroom, uh, but outside the classroom as well. The BCC experience, it's a holistic uh, value that uh, I think that people take, graduates take with them wherever they go. I told them you can go anywhere from uh, BCC, uh, but you also have it the rest of your life, and it's a very important uh, experience. So service learning, uh, uh, so excited about it. We're, uh, BCC is one of only 62 uh, institutions of higher learning in the country, in the country, uh, 62 who have been given the community, uh, community engagement classification by the Carnegie uh, uh, Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching uh, and, and Learning. We also have been named the uh, President's Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll. President being not President Sprague, but President Obama. Uh, so National President's Honor Roll of uh, Bristol Community College is so recognized. And we're very excited about that. Uh, the total number of students is uh, uh, staggering what, when you think of what, what uh, few, relatively few, we started with. We moved on, uh, uh, I think service learning is kind of an old-fashioned term now that we don't use much anymore, civic engagement. And civic engagement is, uh, is actually the key, and again, to that holistic education that I talk about. And I want to recognize uh, Professor Mary Zahn, uh, uh, whom you'll hear from later, but uh, uh, her great outstanding leadership. I was able to provide a presidential uh, fellowship uh, for Professor Zahn uh, some years ago now to get it started and uh, kick-started, and, uh, and then her, she just took off with it. Uh, and we're very happy about that. Civic engagement, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Zahn will be the first.
embarrassed to say that she has a lot of uh, outstanding help, and she does, but uh, I don't want to uh, overlook or minimize her outstanding leadership in all of this. So thank you very much, Mary. Again, it falls into that holistic education uh, experience, uh, cooper and cooperative education does as well. Uh, cooperative education, uh, I had the honor of starting at another institution in another state, uh, so I'm familiar with both service learning and uh, cooperative education from my past, and uh, it's been wonderful to see it take off. Uh, it was uh, you know, very exciting here at Bristol Community College. We now have hundreds of employers uh, who uh, step forward, even in this climate, uh, in this fiscal climate, uh, where we, you know, everybody's watching uh, uh, dollars and cents, uh, uh, people who have come forward and provide opportunities with pay uh, in cooperative education. It's not only a job or an internship, but it must be with pay. Uh, and uh, people have stepped forward, and I want to tell you how appreciative we are for this. It's a valuable exercise for our students. It's a valuable exercise for you. I, mean, I hope that you are reaping benefits in your uh, place of the uh, work, workplace, as well as for the college. So it's a great community effort. Uh, uh, I want to recognize uh, uh, Margaret Coro, Peg Coro, and Nicole Heaney, who have done great work, and you'll, you'll be hearing from them as well uh, about the outstanding work that our cooperative education uh, uh, program provides for, for us. Well, on to the uh, main uh, task at hand, and that is we're honored, uh, absolutely honored, to have uh, with us uh, uh, our keynote speaker. Uh, this is a busy time. Uh, I must tell you that some of you may have been a uh, great friend of education. Some of you may have been in this very uh, uh, area of the lobby in March when we had a press conference with the governor and the secretary of education and the commissioner of higher education. Uh, Lieutenant governor had another obligation that, uh, at that moment. But it was at that moment that I announced two very outstanding pieces of news. Uh, one is that uh, because of the uh, for uh, next year as well. I don't know you can say that. And it's the third straight year that we've uh, been able to make that pledge, and we have not lost uh, any of our BCC family as a result of that. And uh, one, uh, one of the people most responsible uh, for that is here today to speak to us, and I must tell you what a great uh, uh, champion uh, the Lieutenant Governor is for uh, education in general. Uh, higher education, public higher education. He has served as the mayor of, uh, of Worcester in the past, so he knows exactly uh, the importance of education. And those two things I talked about, levels of literacy, levels of uh, educational attainment, he faced also as mayor of Worcester and faces now on a statewide basis as lieutenant governor. But the Patrick and Murray uh, administration has come forward, stepped up in this day and age. Who raises... Uh, uh, it increases allotments, uh, it's just unheard of, and yet they were able to step up and make uh, these important changes uh, for the, so that public higher education can thrive and do the, go about doing the business of the Commonwealth. It's our job to work, to train the workforce and to provide the foundation for future development, and uh, there's no more important champion for that than the person that's my honor to introduce to you today, Lieutenant Governor Tim Murray. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Let me uh, just say, I would ask as we uh, go about our business today, uh, the Fall River community just a few weeks ago recognized uh, a proud son who uh, was killed in Afghanistan, Sergeant Robert Barrett. And today, the community west, uh, in western Massachusetts uh, community is uh, honoring a Sergeant uh, Marine named Joshua Vesforges, who was also killed on behalf of our country. So just as we go about our business, if I keep Joshua and, and, and his family and your thoughts and prayers going forward the same way that uh, this community did in remembering Robert Barrett, a graduate of Durfee, uh, as well. It's great to be uh, here at Bristol Community College. It's my third visit to a Bristol Community College uh, facility in the last two or three, uh, last, a couple, uh, last month, I've had three visits. We had an interagency council meeting that I chair, interagency council on uh, substance abuse uh, and prevention here. Uh, just uh, last month I had a chance to visit the Attleboro campus 
uh, and see that built out, absolutely beautiful. We worked with uh, the uh, legislative delegation, we, Governor Patrick and I did, and, and the leadership here to help make sure that that facility got built, and what a hustling, bus, bustling facility that it is. And then back here today to, to say thank you to, to uh, the students who are out in the community, engaged in, in a positive way, uh, to the employers, thank you for taking the time to mentor, to, to help employ uh, young people and, and get them to know about civic engagement and, and ways to give back and build their resumes, but also their confidence, but also the spirit of community that is, as Jack said, part of the community college, uh, Bristol Community College name. And it's just great to be at a community college. My wife is the first in her family to go to college, and what made that possible was Quinn Sigerman Community College in Worcester. And people sometimes wonder, and there are cynics out there who say, where do my tax dollars go? Where do they go? They go to places like this. And these are worthy and strategic investment, investments that we make as taxpayer dollars, because 85% of the graduates of our state colleges, community colleges, and universities stay in Massachusetts. And you earn what you learn. And as you young people in this room have pushed and, and, and people have come back to school to get your degree, uh, you have positioned yourself to better provide for yourself and your family, to contribute to your city and town and to the commonwealth and the country's economy. Our economy is one that is innovation-based, and it is so critical that we have people, professionals, with those educational attainment levels to plug into those jobs. Now, too often is bad news. I come with a little good news today. Jack Sprague is saying, does he have a check for us? Uh, I don't. But how many here are, are going to be graduating? All right. Well, today, it's great. Today, uh, we are announcing uh, the employment figures for Massachusetts for April, uh, revised figures for March and April, and uh, the good news is Massachusetts has added the last month uh, 19,100 jobs. Over, over 16,000 of them are in the private sector, which is, which is encouraging. We're seeing jobs added in two sectors of the economy, which oftentimes are, are seen as leading indicators of the direction that we're going in, in construction and manufacturing. Uh, so those, that was a good sign. And it's the third month in a row that we have seen that that, and that is most important. And I'll tell you, you know that. We are working hard with employers, with our institutions of learning about how do we make investments and create jobs in every region of our state. And one of the foundations of that approach has been continuing to fund education, whether it be early education and care, K through 12, trying to you know, doing everything we can in the midst of tough budgets to level fund Chapter 70, and then also working to make sure that we're funding higher ed at the levels that it needs to be to make sure that the people who are attending Bristol Community College and the other 15 community colleges across the state uh, have the, the resources and the faculty gets the support uh, that they need. It's a challenge, but I'm confident that we are coming out of this economic downtown, downturn through the hard work of our people, our employers, and those of us uh, at the state level who are not going to rest until every adult who can and should be working has the opportunity to work. So uh, let me just uh, share that with you a little bit uh, today. The, um, so today's about, first and foremost, uh, acknowledging the people involved with the cooperative education and civic engagement programs, and uh, Jim was mentioned, and again, oftentimes there are people who like to pit government versus the private sector uh, against one another. And I know that as a mayor in Worcester for five years as uh, lieutenant governor, but the only meaningful way you create job creation and build an educated, well-trained workforce is by partnership between the private sector and the public sector. And Jim, your leadership and all the employers in this room are, are the epitome of that, uh, with people like uh, Mary and Peg, who I met, and, and Nicole, who helped facilitate that taking place. In the wake of September 11th, uh, a date that I think everybody in this room remembers, 
Uh, we saw this country come together and inspired in a way of unity and understanding that I think we all wish we had back a little bit more today. We saw one of the things that, spring, that sprung out of that was a renewed commitment to giving back in a variety of different ways across the country. In 2003, uh, President Bush announced the formation of the President's Council on Service and Civic Participation. And through this council, Bristol Community College had the opportunity to proudly recognize members of the community, ranging from students, faculty, administrators, staff, who have all made contributions to their community through service and civic engagement. With the spirit of civic engagement, uh, about a year ago, President Obama signed into law the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act. This landmark legislation further encourages Americans like those of you being honored today to serve in their communities. Last summer, our Commonwealth, our country, and people around the leader who lost a champion, who dedicated his life to public service, and whose family epitomized a commitment to public service, whether it be in the military and serving those who might have developmental uh, challenges or disabilities uh, to serving uh, in government. After the loss of Senator Kennedy, President Obama called all of us uh, to join uh, in service on September 11 to honor the heroes and the sacrifice of our brave uh, servicemen and women who serve people like Robert Barrett and Sergeant Desforges from Ludlow. This renewed spirit of civic engagement uh, provides a great opportunity for, for people uh, of all ages to become involved and become active citizens. Uh, this is participatory democracy. It requires not that we just show up on election day and vote for whoever we think uh, is in sync with our political value system or beliefs, but it also requires a commitment uh, uh, on days and weeks in between. Uh, in our administration, Governor Patrick, we have worked hard to try to uh, strengthen and build a commitment to civic engagement and public service. We've dedicated our Office of Civic Engagement that seeks to lead the administration out into community-based participation. And many of the key initiatives that we've been focusing on are looking to uh, identify particular issues and challenges in every region of the state, recognizing that what it's, the issues might be or challenges in the South Coast or Southeastern Massachusetts are very different than perhaps, say, the Merrimack Valley or Berkshire County or the Cape. While there may be similarities, we know that there are differences. Uh, one of the things that we have been able to do is uh, try to facilitate public uh, awareness and civic engagement by making government more open and transparent. Uh, we are holding uh, and some of the uh, efforts that we have, are doing is having public hearings on a whole variety of policy uh, making decisions uh, going forward around the state, whether it be the budget hearings, which haven't always been easy and pleasant, but helping inform people about where their dollars go, uh, what is it spent on, allowing them to ask questions, to make su suggestions. And we have done that in an unprecedented way. Uh, we have asked every one of our cabinet secretaries and commissioners to make sure that they are holding meetings out, public meetings as well, around the state in every region uh, in a way that lets them know that the Commonwealth does not begin and end around the neighborhood, around the state house. And most recently, in the fall of 2009, uh, there was, as I mentioned, a statewide tour uh, which has been followed up upon about bringing the budget conversation and the fiscal crisis out to people. And these public forums uh, give us a great opportunity to listen, not just talk. And in doing so, these public hearings, we had a conversation with over 4,500 residents in 30 different communities from the Berkshires to the Cape. We also know how important it is to engage our young people who have been serving and getting involved recently in unpre at unprecedented levels. We want to try to continue that and sustain that, uh, which is why we have uh, engaged in a, a series of forums uh, called What's Your Massachusetts? What's Your Massachusetts? A young adult forum series to see and understand some of the issues that young people feel are important and what they see the future needs uh, that need to be addressed uh, for Massachusetts to be successful for them in their own personal quests. And as a result of these efforts, we've had over a thousand young people 
engaged in conversations, not just with the governor and myself, but cabinet secretaries, talking about energy and environmental issues, economic development and education issues, so that we are being responsive. Because it is so critical, if we are going to meet the needs of our employers, that we understand uh, also what the needs are of their future employees are going to be. There are, uh, uh, each and every one of you, I think, are examples of, of giving back being role models and mentors in your community. And we know that technology has created a new level of transparency and opportunity for people to get involved and also a new level of complexity uh, in our lives at times uh, for things that were supposed to make life easier. They also can make things a little bit more complicated. And we want to try to make sure that you, uh, through your efforts of being involved in your community, getting involved, uh, can also build into understanding and learning about what's taking place at the state level. And so we have, Governor Patrick and I are both Twittering and, and we have our Facebook accounts, but we also have tried to make sure that our state website is one that you can actively participate in. Not be a passive observer, but you can blog on experiences that you have. What has your experience been like here at Bristol Community College? What were good things? What other things would you like to see improved? Please, we have our blog. Uh, transportation issues, uh, uh, environmental issues. We monitor that. We want to hear from you about what we can to do better. We have 10 different blogs across state government. And if anyone wants to get on there and make a suggestion or vent, I understand people like to do that on occasion. But that's a good thing, because you care. Uh, you care about your community, your neighborhood, your city, your town, and you care about the future of the Commonwealth. So uh, please uh, join us on, on mass.gov uh, and, and join us in the blog and, and learn, uh, learn about what's happening in your community and your region. And, and let me just uh, end with this before I congratulate all the recipients and again thank you. Uh, is, is, to the, is, is please stay involved. And I'll make a pitch. Jack mentioned it. Please. Think about getting involved uh, in your community, making this, what you've done here today, a lifelong process. Certainly we need more people to serve and run for office. Sometimes people think of that as on Washington or the State House. But as someone who served in local government, uh, as a city councilor, as a mayor, as a library board trustee, there are an inordinate amount of opportunities for you and just the city and town where you live to get involved. Library board, cable advisory committee, uh, a history, you know, town history committee, parks and recreation. Please get involved uh, because the more you learn about your community in ways you never did, uh, it will uh, help in ways that you would never understand until you get there, and it will give voice uh, to, to to what people are experiencing to make state state government, I mean, city and town government more responsive, state government responsive. You never know where it will take you someday. So uh, again, congratulations to each and every one of you, to all who have made this day possible. Uh, on behalf of Governor Patrick, we are immensely proud of uh, your, your contributions, uh, and we look forward to them continuing for decades to come. celebrate with us at Bristol, not just today, but as he mentioned, he's a frequent visitor at Bristol Community College. He has a very tight schedule, unfortunately, uh, uh, and must leave us, but uh, I did want to uh, leave, uh, leave a few uh, mementos with him, and one is uh, a pen for you to sign all those checks for Bristol Community
long ago, if the lieutenant governor stood here and said he was twittering, we'd probably call 911. <laughs> <coughs> Next, we're going to bring up the people who talk about cooperative education. Um, as I mentioned, I've had the privilege of being involved with the uh, BCC Block Program on the advisory board from day one, so back to the years of uh, President Carley and then under the leadership of President Sprague. It's really flourished. Uh, this is actually the 24th year for BCC's Cooperative Education Program. Obviously, that means when we sit down and do this next year, it's going to be a very special occasion for us. In talking with uh, Peg, uh, we discussed how many students have been able to take advantage of co-op over the past 24 years. It's a big number, a very big number, I'm sure. How many students in here are in co-op this year? How many co-op students do we have here? And are there any who have had it in the past who are here? as well. Because we're conservatively estimating that there are probably between four and five thousand of you out there now who have taken advantage of BCC's cooperative education program over the course of the past 24 years. Also, uh, before I bring Peg up, <clears throat> I think it's apropos listening to the Lieutenant Governor's comments about the support of education and, and the importance of it. <clears throat> the relevance of, of him speaking to you about what you can do, because um, you're sitting in a chair I sat in uh, a little over 30 years ago. This is where I went to school. And I got my associates, and that's, uh, that was as far as I went with, with uh, my education. And it has served me really well. I talk to Dr. Sprague about this all the time, about how, uh, how they talk about changing lives, learner by learner, and how that relates to me. And I hope, it, and, and I hope it's the same in how it relates to each of you. Because when I came into this school, I was someone who clearly wanted to learn just like you. I wouldn't have been here otherwise. But I wasn't sure of myself. I certainly didn't think of myself as somebody who could really do well here, or much less after, uh, after leaving here. And this school absolutely changed my life. It changed it educationally, professionally, and personally. Everything having to do with my life is better because I spent <clears throat> those years going to school here as a continuing ed student. I was going to say the three and a half years here, but that might be taken long. Um, so, I think it's very apropos that the Lieutenant Governor come here and talk about his commitment to education, and specifically to the community college. Now, getting back to cooperative education, and bringing Peg up and Nicole Heaney, who run the program, there were 278 students in, involved in cooperative education at the community college this year. That is the largest cooperative education program of any community college in the state of Massachusetts. And it happened in the region that perhaps faces the most economic challenges, or it's probably the most difficult for employers to be able to step up and participate and do what they need to do. And so this is a testament to this college, to its leadership, to the people who manage and oversee and lead the cooperative education program, to all of the employers who are here today, and we need to say thanks to you, and to the students who are the ones who make this work every year, and who it's done for, quite frankly. So with that, let me bring up our Department of Education leaders, Peg Curl and Nicole Heaney. Thank you, Jim. Well, we have one other piece of business that we need to do. Um, I hope you all enjoyed your luncheon that was prepared by Chef Chris Mo and the Culinary Arts staff. opportunity to partner with many large and small companies and agencies and governmental offices um, to set up work-based learning opportunities for students. This year we worked with 152 employers. 16% uh, of those employers took more than one intern, so that was pretty phenomenal. And as Jim said, 278 students earned academic credit and earned over $250,000 in wages. So that was a great milestone to help them support their education. In addition, the BCC Co-op Program partnered with the Greater New Bedford Workforce Investment Board and the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce on a Department of Education and Elementary and Secondary Education um, 
Connecting Activities Grant. Uh, partnering with area high schools and youth programs, Connecting Activities worked with 1,061 students this year and 208 companies in the greater New Bedford region. They provided internships, teacher externships, career fairs, and they took part in Construction Career Day, which is a big statewide initiative. Um, we have provided opportunities for students to set career goals, to gain real world experiences, and to make wise choices about their future educational plans. And all of this would not have been possible without the very dedicated and competent professionals who work in co-op and connecting activities. In the interest of time, the names are all listed inside your program, so I encourage you to, to take a look at that. And for our employers especially, none of the work that we do would be possible without your support. So I sincerely thank you. real quickly into some awards for students and for our employer partners. And with that, I'd like to introduce Nicole Heaney, who is Coordinator of Cooperative Education. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. And I know that we're moving along quickly, but I'd personally like to thank our advisory board members today, who are also listed on the back of our program. We're not the type of advisory board that meets a lot or um, kind of exchanges a lot of paper. I really look to our advisory board to provide us with resources, direction, and they help me with contacts and leads. And more importantly, they're the vocal advocates of BCC and of the co-op program in the community, and they play a huge role, so thank you. I'd also like to thank our department under the direction of PEG, um, all of the logistics that you imagine and all of the uh, technical issues through Deb she did a great job today at this um, event as you can see this was no easy task our connecting activity staff they provide together with um, the co-op staff we provide seamless educational opportunities for uh, businesses and for students from ninth grade all the way to their associates degree and I'd also like to thank our co-op faculty they help to really structure the internship and connect the classroom to the real world experience. And lastly, I'd just like to thank our students and our businesses. This was obviously a very difficult year um, in terms of the recession. Um, we are seeing more students than ever who are coming out and understanding that doing an internship is absolutely imperative part of their education and it's an integral part of their education. And they realize that the job market is so competitive right now that your internship is actually really how our first job used to be. Um, so they're really taking it seriously. We've seen a diverse group of students, and they're extremely motivated student body. And lastly, of course, to all our employers, because I know it takes time to mentor students, and but the employers obviously see um, a large payback in what they're doing, because as the lieutenant governor said, our students uh, are, are getting educated and staying here. They're not moving to Boston, they're not moving to Los Angeles, they're buying homes, they're uh, paying taxes, and they're living here in the South Coast. So it's wonderful that the employers are embracing that. Okay, without further ado, we give out three student awards, which was extremely difficult this year, because as I said, we have an incredible group of highly motivated, high quality students this year. But I would like to award Amanda Cantara, Uh, Amanda is a 
extremely smart. She was going to school full time and she's worked for the past five years at Dunkin' Donuts full time while attending school. But she wanted to do something that was related to her major. And it was one of those serendipitous occasions where she walked in after I had just gotten a phone call from Cynthia and the match was perfect. Um, she was instantly made to feel like one of the crew, including the day that Cynthia went out and bought her her first pair of steel-toed work boots and gave her her heart attack. Um, Cynthia describes the training they gave her as baptism by fire. So basically they threw her in, and Amanda started in January. So she was out every day in January, February, March, in the pouring rain, in the snow, collecting very specific samples. Um, we give out an evaluation every year to the supervisors, and the highest rating you can get is excellent, but Cynthia made her own boxes and checked off outstanding for most of Amanda's um, skills. <laughs> Amanda's tough, smart, she learned on the fly, and she's detail-oriented. Amanda appreciated the real experience. She said that she learns a lot in the classroom from being at BCC, but it's completely different experience when you're out there and you're actually doing it. Her future plans are to continue to get her bachelor's degree in environmental science, and I'm pleased to announce that she's been hired by Common Sense to work with them as one of their new staff members. Most recently, 
recently he ran for and won the student senate seat on the board of trustees. Christopher has a bright future and this opportunity has opened many doors for him. He is highly motivated, positive, and exuberant. receiving for the employers. So the students came out in droves and nominated, and I'd like to let you know that so many people were nominated, but we could only pick three. The three that were able to secure a position to uh, get an award this year were South Coast Hospitals Group, Sylvia Group of Insurance Agencies, and the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. Um, South Coast has been one of our original co-op partners for more than 20 years ago. Um, we work closely um, in our entire department, providing work-based experiences for students in high school through our Connecting Activities program all the way up through college internships. They always offer high quality placements where the students learn skills and they can see a variety of industries and careers in healthcare that they may not already know about. Elaine always has a can-do attitude and she tailors that position to exactly what the student is looking for. I'd like to highlight two particular people, in, um, three particular people, Elaine Wilcox, Neil Piazza, and Brad Silverman as they were recognized by their students for providing them with excellent mentoring. Both of them created opportunities and supported student growth and provided constructive feedback. So I'd like to thank South Coast Hospitals for partnering with us for well over 20 years. Armstrong. The Sylvia Group of Insurance Agencies is another locally owned business enterprise and it offers full service insurance services. They have received the prestigious five star agency designation by the Mass Association of Insurance Agents. Um, Marlene gave Shuri access to all the departments so that he could learn about the entire company before he was actually placed in the accounting office. It was a very professional and supportive environment and he was instantly made to feel like part of the team. They got the student involved in a number of, dis of tasks that were designed specifically for the student to learn, not so much for the benefit of the company, but so the student could learn and could grow. Um, it was evident when I went out for the site visit on how much Denise really enjoys her job, which is funny for someone who's a social worker when I see people passionate about numbers. Um, it was, but it was very evident to see that she is, and she really um, was able to expose Sharif to that passion, and I think it was something great for him to see. Um, they spent many, many hours, the whole staff, mentoring Sharif, both in accounting procedures and generally his professional development. They provided honest and useful um, criticism and um, assessment, in an assessment in a formal interview, and they supplemented his academics with different types of books and things that they had in the office. Sharif explains that he is truly grateful for the opportunity that Sylvia Group provided him, and he'd like to thank them for their outstanding support. Student Career Employment Program this year um, that I had the opportunity of developing with um, Michelle Camara, who is here to receive the award today. This provides opportunities to full-time permanent federal positions.
for our office administration students. We have one student who's hired already and several more that are in the queue to be hired. But the, what's very special about this opportunity for me to work with Naval Industry Warfare Center is that I had the opportunity to work with Michelle Pamara, who was a student that I placed there several years ago from the Secretarial Science Program here at BCC. So she's a very proud Bristol Community College alumna and is now a human resources specialist at Naval Undersea. So it was a pleasure to do this contract. We provide, we're providing opportunities for many more students for our institution. And I would like to award this to Michelle Kamara from Naval Undersea. Presented by Ravitha Amara Singham, who is the, a professor and director of the Childhood and Early Childhood Education Program at Bristol Community College.
award is for Kathy Torgan-Donganta, who is the dean of the Attleboro campus. And she, uh, she's not here, she, uh, <laughs> has been on the advisory board even before I ever took over the program. And she has really been a driving force to build the campus uh, program in Attleboro, along with my colleague, Rebecca Klopp, who is the um, coordinator and assistant director there. So thank you very much, Kathy. Each year we have students vote for faculty who have sponsored them and this year we have an award for somebody who was surprised by me this morning because he didn't answer his emails. Is Robert Rack? Well. 
Michael Hull, 500 more hours. Served as a Zaza Action Team member through American Red Cross. Served as an operator for the Samaritan Hotline. Organized a food drive for Salvation Army, which he led a lot of other people on. And he worked as night supervisor for a homeless shelter for Salvation Army. Hours. He volunteered at South Coast Hospital, promoted engineering to students at Keith Middle School, and worked at a citizen school. <laughs> Helda Lobo.
collected canned food and children's books for project graduation. Aileen Pollock, professor of history. Read to the Bedford students, led workshops and training events, organized and supervised call banks, and organized trips to the State House for the Coalition for Social Justice and the Coalition Against Poverty. A couple of that together. Michael Vieira, Associate Thank you. 
then I recruited other students to the program and helped us build the program. We also have, and your certificates will be available on the way up, deadline setting them out, all organized as I speak. The advisory board, their names are listed in the program. Please take a look at that. And with the advisory board members present, still stand, please.